Live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. everyone and welcome to the 2018 season opener. We are live at Doc's Irish Pub. Actually we're in the back in the Tiki Bar area having a good time here in Gilbertsville, PA and it's a shaky day. We had, we had sun, we had rain, we had heat, we had all kinds of things and I want to thank the crew and everybody over here at Doc's for helping us out as we're getting straightened out here for our first show of the 2018 season. Well as we always do, uh, we take a quick break we come back, I want to introduce you to one of our new guest hosts uh, that we have on the show tonight. We're going to talk about all the high school games that happened the last couple of weeks. Look forward to see what's going on there as well. I'm Dave Ridenauer, the Monday Morning Quarterback. This is the Vala Host on Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Quarterback, right after this. Yeah! At Vala Host on Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Blahos Dunn Insurance. And we're in your community. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers. From awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar. Numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Ducks Irish Pub. This portion of Monday Morning Quarterback is brought to you by A to Z Furniture. A to Z Furniture is located on 296 South Reading Avenue in Boyertown. Hey, we're back here at Doc's Irish Pub. We're out on the back patio. The pub on the on the on the patio, I guess, is what they call it. the Tiki Bar. Again, Vlaus Dunn Shorts Monday Morning Quarterback Dave Reiner. and my old buddy uh, retired from the coaching ranks after 29 plus years here at Potts Grove. Uh, Rick Pennypacker. I want to welcome Rick to the show. When uh, he after a, a successful and long time uh, career at Potts Grove, Rick, and it's it's great to have you. Coach Mick is on the mend. Uh, had some surgery recently, and we hope. Hope that Coach Mick is doing well. He'll be back in the fold when he's feeling up to it. But again, I want to thank Rick no for problem. stepping in. Rick, uh, welcome to the show, buddy. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it's good to be here. You know, on this side, you know, I'm not worrying about any stress of, of all these other 12 Pac-10 quarterback or coaches in the league, what they're going through. But uh, it's nice to sit back here and just relax and talk to you. Well, it's been an interesting first couple of weeks. Yes, uh, you know has. as well as anybody that the rigors of this non-league type action. Uh, you know, people have different thoughts and philosophies. I know you wanted to stay local, and you're playing the Boyer Towns and the Owen Jays and the Methactons and those Absolutely. kind of teams, even though they are not in your division. So, uh, you know, things are breaking down a little bit. Uh, anything that jumps off the page at you after the well, first two weeks? I think when you when I was looking at statistics this past weekend, you know. This zero week is really hurting high school football, I think. You know, for years and years and years, every team had two scrimmages and then you go into your first game. I think uh, when you look at the fumbles, uh, the penalties that are, you know, the sloppiness of some of the games, you know, I think it's all because that there's not that second scrimmage. Uh, 
kids are thrown into playing high school football very, very quickly. There's some of them had two games before Labor yeah, Day. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that that's, that's something that every coach has to deal with. But I think if you watch the first couple games this year, I don't think that's going to be the sloppiness of it's not going to be like that throughout the entire year. Well, I know in, in the first game that we did over uh, Potsgrove West Catholic, yes, and there was all kinds of things, all sides, procedures. There were a couple of timeouts were called because they didn't have enough guys on the field for special right. teams and all those things. And, and I think it's kind of funny because the pros even have four preseason games. Yes. Not that they play all their front liners, but they need that much time to get ready for their opener. And now, but the high schools, you know, can get right in there. I don't quite understand it. Well, no, and, and you know, they can – they. You can have two scrimmages, but you can only play nine games. Right. Uh, I know uh, West Westchester Rustin's only playing nine games. They're playing two scrimmages. Uh, I know that their coaches feel like they need to have those two scrimmages to get their kids up to par. But, uh, you know, it was um, – I, I, I looked at the stats, and I was kind of surprised. You know, one that really stuck out at me last week, because I'm a little prejudiced to Potsgrove, right. I'm sorry. But there was eight fumbles. Right. Right. And, and three of them were lost. Now, I don't know if we've ever had eight fumbles in this. Now, I know it was a wet night and everything, but, uh, you know, and, and it was all over. You know, you looked at some teams had 90 yards and penalties and, yeah. and, and fumbles here. And I just think that's not coaching. I think that's just kids not being prepared to play. And then, you know, they're in the heat all week, and then they get this, these storms on Friday night last week. Uh, I, I just hope that, you know, as we go through the year, you know, things will start getting a little yeah, bit better, I a little bit so. better football. Well, Rick, each week we do have our top five, and I guess Matt's in the truck here. He can pop this up for us. The top five is brought to you by the Reinhardt boys, the Reinhardt paint gang. There's Keith and Ronnie Reinhardt been with us from, from the inception of the Monday morning quarterback. Great guys, two good athletes. Ronnie, a Hall of Famer and, and a heck of a football player in his own right. And uh, the top five looks like this after two weeks. We got PJP up top, 2-0. Spring Ford 2-0. Potsgrove in there in that three slot. Owen J. Roberts with a quick st uh, start. Coach Kolka has to be extremely happy. And I know Park Valley has had a tough go, but they have played two quality teams. That is our top five, again, brought to you by the Reinhardt Paint Gang. Well, we got four undefeated teams there, and, and PV hasn't won a game yet, but still their they're, uh, credentials from last year and the players they have uh, give them that credibility. But it's, it's, it's interesting to see everybody start now. Right. I, 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 top five right now to me, it, it would be hard for me to pick them. I think you've got to go with those five teams you're saying right there. But, you know, when, when you look at Boyertown, who's one and one, and, and I watch them on film, and, uh, you know, I think Coach Miller's got that team in the right direction. I think that Phoenixville, you know, with their talent they have coming back, and, and Pottstown, I think, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting year. But I think you've got to put PV and Pottsgrove up there until someone beats them. You know, right. they have been back-to-back -back divisional champions, and they should be the favorites to win it if they don't. If someone's got to beat them. You know, yeah. someone's got to beat Pottsgrove, and someone's got to beat uh, Perk Valley. And, uh, you know, until someone beats them, I think that uh, they got to be up there. But uh, PJP, uh, you know, that – I know you like them going into I, the I told season. You that, yeah, yeah, you did I tell me that. We bit. talked a little bit about them. I talked a little bit of, uh, to some guys over there, and I think that that Natal, Natalie or Natal, whatever you yep. pronounce his name. Natalie, AJ he, he, is, he is one heck of a football player. You know, I think that uh, the transfer to quarterback Come coming in, yeah, yeah, I think you know, he's had a great season so far this year. And, you know, Rory does a great job. Uh, I think Rory has a, a, a good – mix of uh, run-pass ratio, what he does over there. And I think he has some good linemen coming back. I know he's excited about his offensive line. So I think that they're, they're the team to beat right now, and I think they're uh – you know, they're one of, those, one of those top teams. Okay, well, we do have our scoreboard. Uh, I think that should be up and uh, ready to go. Our scoreboard, uh, I believe, is, is brought to you. There it is by Paul Bauer. Paul Bauer, the, the attorney, that you can count on. Give him a call, and uh, Paul will take good care of you. There you can see all the scores from last week. And, again, it's a big scoreboard with all 12 teams playing again. Uh, up top, you can see there's Pope John Paul with their big win over New Hope Salisbury. Exeter with a big come-from-behind win over Boyertown. You know, you and I both like them. Uh, I think T.J. Miller's doing a good job. Boyertown's going to make some noise. Potsgrove with a big win and another shutout over Methacton. Uh, Owen J. Roberts, we talked briefly, beats a little backyard rival there with uh, Daniel Boone. It's good to see those two teams at each other. Westchester East shuts out Pottstown. And Upper Marion with a big win. Vic Brown in his second year has to be pretty happy with a shutout win. And again, I want to thank Paul Bauer. 
uh, Paul Bauer, the attorney that you can count on. Give him a call for all your attorney needs. Well, okay, you know, we talked about the fact that some of these teams are coming out and scoring a lot, but then you also look on the other side of the ball. Defense has really been an area that maybe doesn't get as much work early on because everybody wants to get that offense going, get yep. that offense mm -hmm. going. And you can see that some of these teams are giving up quite a few points. Right? Yes, and, I, and the one the one stands out to me is Boyertown. You know, when, when – uh, I never would think Boardtown would give that many points up in one game. Uh, you know, TJ was a defensive guy last year. I thought he did a tremendous job. But you know, and there's, but but again, there are, there, there's so much that has to go into preparation. You know, and you have to make sure that you're. You're prepared week in and week out, and I know TJ will have those guys next next week. Well, that. you know, I think you're certainly an old school coach, right. and you've put a lot more time in defense than a lot of other coaches mm -hmm. did. Uh, I know a lot of people want to worry about putting the spread in; they want to make sure all the all the meshes are down and all right. the reads and all the different things. And the defense sort of gets put on the back burner. Right. But again, you see some of these teams, like an ONJ, is scoring 32 points a game, but they're giving up a lot yeah, of points. Right. Boyertown scoring a lot of points, but they're giving up more than they're scoring, and they got to find a way to stop. Well, you know, I was, I've always been under the philosophy that, you know, defense and special teams win games, you know. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons Potsgrove is 2-0 is and o right now. I mean, uh, Bradford has that defense. They have nine seniors playing on that team right now on defense. They're, they're special teams with Mike Serini and, and Coach Ford doing the job over there. I think special teams has, has gotten them to be 2-0 and o right now. Well, you know, we talked a little bit about the new coaches there. Oh, you know, that's goodness. one of the things that I thought was interesting. If you look in it, there's 12 coaches, obviously. Seven of them are either first or second year coaches. So the league is turning over. They're getting a lot of more younger guys. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they don't have a lot of guys that are going to be 29 year vets like you. They, they, don't, they don't work that way anymore. But, uh, you know, you got Grinstead at, at Phoenixville. You got Billy Hawthorne taking over for you. You have uh, Milligan at Norristown. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Lotier at Mathak, and all first year guys right. and that first year's got to be tough you're trying to implement all your all your philosophies and all your yeah, all your yeah, systems yeah. you know it, it's it's really interesting because not only that is you not only do you have to be a head coach now and take another part of of responsibility you know now you're the the, the you know, CEO of the whole team but the other thing is now you got to be able to prepare and I think preparation is the hardest thing for a new coach to learn you know how to prepare week in and week out scouting reports practice plans um, and then, you know, the other thing I, th I think that people have to realize is you've got to find some tape on Billy Hawthorne. You've got to find some tape on Grinstead. You've got to see what they're doing. These guys are new. Uh, you know, Postgrove's not running the same offense I ran. Uh, Grinstead's not going to run the same offense that Breezeblatt ran when he was down there. And so, you know, Mathacton's going to change over their offense. So you've got to find, you know, oh, in the offseason, you're working on trying to, you know, break down film of the previous year. But now – you got four new coaches. You know, you got to find out what they're doing. It, it's it's a challenge, and and the grind of being a head coach is, is people don't realize that. And I have a lot of respect for all the head coaches in this league. Well, we did a we did a little preview show down at Spring Ford the uh, the week that they had the coaches meeting right. and all those mm -hmm. things. It was really a, a, a fun time for us. I got a chance, opportunity to talk to guys, but the guys like Fisher and Miller, those second year guys, oh, second year round, guys, yes. they said it's so much easier for them this year. Not easy, no. just easier because. You know, they got that first year under the belt. The kids are understanding where the guys are coming from. So now they're moving right. along into their program. And, and they know what they're doing. I mean, really, when you really get down to it, that, that one-year experience is, is vital. And, and you, look at, you look at our league, too. You know, you also got some coaches that are only in their third year. You know, Rob Heiss and, and, yeah. and Rich Kolka. They're, so really, the, 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 the dean veteran. of the league, the yeah, veterans the are yeah. Chad Brubaker, yeah. Roy Graver, and Tommy Hunt. Yeah. And I'm there like, right. wow, that's... Yeah. I remember when they all came in the league. So, yeah, it's 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 good for the league. It's good to have turnover. It's good to have, uh, you know, coaches getting in here and putting up new philosophies, new new ways of doing things. You know, but uh, I, I I just I enjoy watching. I enjoy watching new coaches and how they react, and we'll see what they do. Well, we want to congratulate Billy Hawthorne uh, and also um, Don Grinstead. Don Grinstead at Phoenixville with his first win. Billy Hawthorne has two wins under his belt. We want to congratulate them. Uh, we're 
Coach Milligan at Norristown and Coach Latier at, at Mathacken still waiting for their first win, and hopefully that will be here before you know it. But, sure. um, you know, any surprises uh, early on for you, Ricky? You know, I know that it's only two games, and they're non-league games, but, you know, I know a couple of teams came with some pretty high expectations. Everybody starts the year off with great enthusiasm. And Everybody's, bigger. Undefeated. Everybody's undefeated. Everybody's undefeated. Everybody's undefeated. And um, anything has sort of jumped off the page at you well, so Well, I think I – think, uh, I, I was, I was very very pleased to see Springfield come out of the gate like they have. I mean, uh, they went down and played. I, I think it was CB South or something, mm -hmm. and, and knocked them off. And then they brought this school over from New Jersey, New Jersey yeah. and they knocked them off. And this Angro kid seems like he's having a great year, and uh, he's he's a real deal quarterback down there. Um, I know people. Chad was crying that you know he lost this and lost that. You know he don't have this, but it seems like he, you know, they just reload and everything. Uh, uh, that really jumped out. And the other one that I went to see Perk Valley play the very first game uh, that I was Friday night that I wasn't coaching. I went down and snuck into Perk Valley, sat on the visitor side and watched them play Downingtown West. And, and let me tell you what, Perk Valley is a very good football team. Yeah. Don't let 0-2. That surprises me. They're 0-2. They should have beaten Downingtown West. I thought they were just as good as Downingtown West in that game. And Rob Heiss has those kids playing at a high level, and I think that they're going to be something to. Well, you know, it's, it's funny because now you talk about the 6A school yeah. and they're, they're scheduling a 6A schedule now. Yes. They want the points for the playoffs. You know, we had all that philosophy. I know when I get down to those meetings, how, how much difference it is. Some people put a lot more value, like yourself, right. on league play, winning the Pioneer Athletic co Conference, winning the Frontier Division, winning the Liberty Division, and others, like a guy like Chad Brubaker, really looks for playoffs. playoffs. That's what his goal is ultimately. Yeah. He wants to get in the district playoffs. And so it's interesting to see how coaches, are pre uh, how they attack things and set up their schedules. Right. And I think it's important that everyone realize that the, a lot of coaches have different philosophies. That doesn't mean they're wrong. Right. I mean, Chad comes from Berks County. Rich Coca came from Berks County. TJ came from Berks County. And I know, uh, I'll never forget years and years ago, Jim Algio Sr. said to me, once you get in the playoffs, you'll want to go back every year. And I wasn't a big playoff guy back in the early 90s and everything. And then all of a sudden, we got in with Steinmetz and those guys. And I'll tell you what, we, 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 that's, we want to get in, but we also wanted to win the league. So that's a philosophy that everybody has. And, and it's, it, I don't, no one is telling me that any team does not want to win the Pac-10. I right. mean, everybody wants to go in the playoffs, but everybody also wants to win the Pac-10. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I checked out all the, the inter, interleague play, or non-interleague play, and then uh, at the Frontier Division is 8-4 and four the yes, first they two are. weeks. Yes, they and are. the Liberty Division, which is the larger schools, are 5-7. and seven. Right. Now, uh, obviously, they're playing some bigger schools and some better teams maybe, but 8-4 and four out of the block for the Frontier Division, it's pretty good. Yes, it is, and I think that the Frontier guys – uh, went out and, and, and kind of like took their schedule upon them to, to get teams that are not as big as Spring Forge and Perk Valley. I mean, I mean, Pasco plays West Catholic, which is a double A school. Uh, you know, they're playing schools their, their own size, and I think they did well. Uh, I, I, I'm, I think Pottstown, you know, uh, playing Westchester East, I, I, I looked at stats in that game. I thought that was a pretty competitive game, even though the score didn't look that way. So I think that they're, you know, the Frontier Division is competitive. I still want to see what's going to happen when we go Frontier Liberty, when we have the crossovers. I know I was a big fan of playing the crossovers. I, I think it's important. I love playing Boyertown. I love playing o and J. I I love playing Spring Forward. And, and, and when you take those games away from us, you know, uh, I, I, just, I just have something about it. But, hey, uh, it, it all comes down to week five when they start playing the, 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 the yeah. league play. That's what it comes down to. Well, you know, another thing that I noticed too is that there were there were a lot of good individuals last year. I mean, you look oh, at that. You look oh. at the all league teams. There were some outstanding individuals. Who's going to be that kid? Who is going to be that right. kid? You know, and and I said obviously you have to start with Rasul Faze on a guy that you yeah. certainly know very very well. And and I know at Potts Grove, uh, Isaiah Glover and Isaiah uh, Taylor were two guys that you know try to fill in the best they can. I mean obviously they're not going to go 90 at any given point like uh, Rasul could do, but they're still trying to find ways to replace guys like that. And, right. and, and uh, what's yeah. your approach in that situation? Coach? Well, I think you know. I personally, I feel like, you know, it's you're never going to be able to replace a Russell Faison. You're never going to be able to replace a Stewart from L&J and, and, and these guys. They're, they're just special people, you know, but your philosophy has to be, 
to get somebody in there and, and, and play with emotion and play with enthusiasm. And I think that's what Potts River's doing with their kids. I think, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to fill the shoes of those guys, you know? I, I know the pressure of going in and trying to be Russell. Yeah, Faison. right. You yeah. can't be that. Know, and, then, and this kid, yeah. uh, Owen Jay, who's now filling in for Stewart. Stewart yeah. was the, the all-time lean passer yeah. of Owen Jay Cooper history. Chamberlain, a young yeah, kid. I yeah. Mean, yeah, that poor kid's got to go in and try to be Stewart. He can't be Stewart. Right. You know, just be Cooper Chamberlain. Uh, you know, and, and, and there's some, there were some tremendous athletes in this league last year. I was, I was shocked that the, the, P, uh, the Pope John Paul kids, I yeah. mean, geez, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, their quarterback, their wide receivers. It's just, it's just been a, uh, you know, and I think as as we go through the season, we'll we'll have those yeah. Rasul Faisons and Stewarts and those guys coming up. You know, you know what? Well, we'll take a quick time out. We'll, we'll take ready for a, our first break here if we can. Uh, Rick and I are going to take a quick deep breath, get a little water down here, and uh, we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about some of these kids that are, are not that need to be uh, have to be replaced uh, after their senior year. We're going to talk about a couple of weeks of the guys that are coming up for this week uh, coming up. Uh, so we're going to take a quick time out. We come back. We got more right here on the Vlahos Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers. From awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar. Numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. We're back here live at the Docks Irish Pub. We're out back at the Tiki Bar. We're at the pub on the patio. We're having a great time. Beautiful new facility out here. All new pavers. They got cornhole games going on. They got all kinds of stuff happening. A lot of fun out here at Docks to stop by. Stop by the, the inside or the outside. Lots going on there. Dave Ridenour again, joined by Rick Pennypacker. And, and Rick, you know, let's look at a couple of the games that are coming up this week. Let's sure. look at our top five teams. Let's start at the bottom. Uh, the game that we will be uh, showing here on the uh, PCTV network. We'll be down at Perky Omen Valley Friday night, tomorrow night, as uh, Perky Omen Valley takes on a real tough Penn Ridge wow. team. You know, we go Downingtown, Downingtown, and now Penn Ridge. Robbie and, Heiss is going to have to have his guys ready to roll. And, and then Robbie Heiss has to next week travel to Interborough to play. So Robbie Heiss, that, that, that schedule, wow. Oh, you know, that's, that's an unbelievable schedule. But I think I think at the atmosphere of Perk Valley, the, I was impressed with the student section. I was impressed with the whole atmosphere when I was down there to watch their first game. But uh, Penn Ridge is, is a very physical team. Uh, I, I know they lost their big their yeah, big, their their big, big guy to Penn State. Right, but his backer. brother is coming up, and I think his brother committed to go to Bucknell, so I think he's a good football player. But I, I do believe I do believe that, uh, you know, P Peter Line, whatever, however you say Cole his Peter name, Line. and mm -hmm. those guys, I, I just think they have too much, I just think they have too much firepower for them. I think Perk Valley will get their first win this weekend. Well, it I should really be don't. a good one to stop on down there and then check the replay out here 
on the PC TV Network Sports is uh, Scotty Furman and I will be there. Scotty Reed will be down on the sidelines doing some sideline reporting as well. So that's always a fun night. Hopefully the weather will stay uh, okay for that one as well. But again, that was a game you that got uh, all the Perk Valley boys down yeah, there. Yeah, I know. You, got you talked about you talked Furlough. about the, uh, the, the uh, we like the we like the uh, uh, the. the uh, enthusiasm in the school spirit down there. That is, it's a lot of good things going on down at PV. And again, Scotty Reed started a lot of it. Robbie Heist in his third year has really Absolutely. picked up the ball Absolutely. and continued to run with it. Now, Owen Jay is our four squad. They uh, take, they go to Oxford. Yes. Oxford, a tough team uh, on the road. You know, Owen Jay is 2-0. Uh, they've done a great job defensively. They're only giving up seven points a game. Only 190 total yeah. yards on defense. You know, we talked about getting that yeah. defense uh, early. Uh, Aiden Hayward and those guys, he's the sack master. He's been doing good um, for the Cats. But they're going to have a big game on the road, Oxford, this yeah, weekend. Yeah, and Oxford, I think, you, that's a long drive. We used to get down there and scrimmage him, and I think – from what I've been hearing from some people in the chess mod, their, their, their program's coming up pretty well right now, and I think that'll be a tough game for Owen J. I, I look for them to win. I think that uh, this, this running back they have, Marcus uh, Martin, Marcus yeah. Martin. I think he's the real deal, and I think he's going to you know, have a little bit too much speed for him. But it'll be a tough game for him, but I think that uh, Owen J. should come on top of that one. I read a little something about Oxford. Oxford has a, a young quarterback that they really like. He's yes. only a junior. I read that. Uh, so they're going to get a couple years out of him, but uh, he's a guy they look forward to. Too, and uh, Oxford's going to be a tough team. Owen Jay has got to be ready for that. Now, this is a game that you really have a lot of interest in. Your old team, the, the Falcons, travel to Boyertown. You know, the Boyertown Bears, uh, T.J. Miller has done a great job in his second year, turned that program around offensively. Aiden Mathias, uh, the quarterback, has done a good job. they got to replace a guy like Jerry Cap, which is not easy to do. But uh, they have been uh, on, on fire offensively. Uh, Jamie Mosh is another guy who's been, been running up the storm. But it's going to be interesting to see when the Falcons and the Bears tow it up yes. next uh, tomorrow. Yeah, that will be interesting. I, I you know, I hate, to, we hate to go to Boyer Town. I did, we just, that was one place we did not play well. Uh, and I know Billy will, will get those kids ready to play, but I don't know if it was something that I did or something, but we just did never went over there and played well. Last year we went over there and uh, that Thomas kid jumped out and yeah. we, they were, they were about 14 yeah, nothing, nothing before yeah, we were yeah, looking around, yeah. you know, and, yeah. uh, but we we finally, so it'll be, it'll be interesting. I love, uh, T.J. Miller's offense right now. If if you put them in a different color uniform, you could say that'd be Potts Yeah. Because yeah. he's running the veer, he's running the midline, he's he's in the eye, he's pounding the football, he's going north and south, and uh, I, I just love what he's doing. I think uh, Bradford, our, the defense coordinator at Potts Grove, will have a great scheme for him. He's playing nine seniors on that team, and there's you know you got those guys like Bedolis and Adams and and Springfield and those guys, they, they played in two championship games with us in, in District 1, so they know what the game, what, they know what they got to do, but it'll be a good game. It'll be an interesting game. Well, another interesting game, uh, because of the fact that Chad Brubaker came from Wilson, Wilson right. High School, Wilson up in West Long, which has always been a powerhouse up in Berks County. Uh, Springford travels to Wilson. You know, they had that tough game uh, a couple years ago up there. Two-point conversion. Two-point conversion. Right, right, and last right. year they had they were in a back-and-forth game. Uh, Springford ended up losing the game 28-21. So there's a, a pretty good rivalry right. developing between Springford and Wilson. The Rams have to travel up to Berks County, though. It's going to be a tough game. It'll be a tough game. And anytime you go up against Don Dames' teams, you know, they're, they're well coached. And, and Chad will have his kids ready to play. I think that'll be uh, a, a pretty tough opponent for Chad um, and Springford. I know that one of their top players from Wilson, I heard, um, had, a, had an injury and he's out for the year with a surgery. So um, I, I just think it's going to be a tough game. But I, I think this Engro kid and Benani, I think his name is, yep. and, and uh, you know, I, I just think that they have a little bit of chemistry going on right now, and uh, I think Chad has their number up there. I think he's uh, he's got some. He's played them tough every year. I know people said a couple of years ago, uh, Wilson's going to crush right, Springford. Right, yeah. He went up yeah, there and almost yeah, beat him, yeah. you know. So. Uh, you know, never, never put down Springford. You know, you got to always be be careful with that. Well, what I, and I, what I sort of like about uh, Springford's team this year too, Rick, is that they don't have the star power. They no, don't have no names that jump name. off the page. Right, right. But they're playing as a team, right. and and they're going to play together as a, as a good group. You know, Jimmy McJr. does a heck of a job. He and Shine and those guys have been around for a long time. They'll come up, and I think part of the thing that 
spring forward, very similar to like a PV team, is their defense gets overlooked sometimes because they've been so pro I, prolific offensively I, I, that their defense gets outlooked. But they got some pretty nice defensive players. I've always said that. I mean, I think Shine and Mick and those guys, whenever we used to play them, you know, their offense was, you know, prolific. I mean, they threw the ball. They had running backs, you know, and they could do all this and everything. But the thing that people don't realize is their defense is what you had, that really got you. And I think that uh, – I think that they run that four three cover two, you know, and they and and they do they don't do a lot of stunt. They play great fundamental, great tackling, and uh, I, I think that's what 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 gets spring forward through the home. All right, and the last game we want to look at is our number one team in our, our top five, the the Reinhardt Payne top five is Pope John Paul, and they had a tussle with Chichester last year. They knocked them off twenty one to twenty right. in a back and forth game that that uh, the the Golden Panthers were able to pull out at the end, but you know. We talked about uh, Coach Graver doing a good job. He's got a good thing going there. They got this young quarterback who transferred in, Kamal Gray, who has really been exciting as a dual threat, a runner as well as a passer. Uh, young Steve Scarbeck has caught a couple of touchdown passes early. Obviously, some pretty good bloodlines there. His father was a, a good player at Pius and then for the University of Delaware. Uh, but uh, that's going to be a tough game. Uh, it is at home. Uh, it is at PJP. Is it Friday night? Down I, in, I think it is in Conchi down there. Conchi, yeah, yeah. I think they're playing there. the A field. Yeah. Well, that, that's an, I think that's a touchdown advantage for PJP to play in Conchi at the A field. <clears throat> they play very well down there. I've, I've seen them play down there a couple times last year. Uh, I just like this team. I, 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 I have a lot of respect for Rory. Uh, I, I, I know what they did to us last year. I know he lost, you know, some skilled kids last year, but – uh, he had some kids back. I think he had four offensive linemen back this year. I love the way that Natal kid runs, you know, and I, I, I just think they're, 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 they're the real deal. Well, you know, they had a guy, Matt DeLaurentis, who De was Laurentiis, the offensive guy. He was first team. He was probably, one of the, you know, besides right. besides your guy, he was probably the number one guy in, in the frontier uh, uh, division as far as ath uh, athleticism and, right. and offensive firepower. They filled right in with him, and so they haven't skipped a beat. I'm anxious to see how they do in that ball game. Yeah, and, and I want to see I want to see how their their defense reacts. I mean, I know they have the firepower offensively. I know last week against New Hope Solberry, I think they gave up some yards. I think Rory was not very happy about, but. I'm, I'm sure that they'll, they'll come to play, and I think it'll be a, a, a tremendous game. I cannot wait to see some of these teams play each other. Well, and again, you know, you're now you're talking the third third week as well, yes. because now you're going to see a lot of the penalties eliminated. Hopefully, right. the turnovers, that's I, the that's... fumbles, the false starts, all those yeah. things have to be eliminated. Now they've had enough practice to get them ready for week number and, three. And, and, and also, uh, a team that I think is being overlooked a little bit is Pottstown. I want to see how how uh, you know. Coach Fisher and those guys over there bring those kids along because I read the paper where, and I never heard of this before in my life, but on, on Thanksgiving Day, 10 of their 11 defensive players were sophomores. sophomores yeah. So those 10 defensive players are, are, are now juniors, and if they're all out, oh, wow. I mean, that, well, they played Kutztown this week, and Kutztown struggled over the last few a little years. Bit, right? So there's an opportunity for them to get better in get, a hurry, get well, get, you know, get themselves on the right track, rebound from the shutout loss they had last week to Westchester East. All right, Rick, well, I want to thank That's you again for right, stopping no problem, by, man. and uh, we're going to see a lot more of you this year, and Enjoy I'm it. looking forward to that, and uh, we'll be in touch, and we'll see what happens over the weekend. But, again, I want to thank Rick Pennypack for stopping in and filling in, and hopefully we're going to see a lot more of him and also Scotty Reed this year until Coach Mick uh, heals up and gets, uh, gets himself back on, on track. But again, uh, we're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we got one of our guests lined up here. We're going to bring him on. and We're going to talk a little NFL as we get ready for the Eagles and the Falcons right here at the pub on the patio at Doc's Irish Pub here in Gilbertsville, PA. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Doc's Irish Pub the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar, numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill 
sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Bean's Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Bean's Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Bean's Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr. Call us or visit our website now. At Blaho's Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blaho's Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Hey, we're back here live at Doc's Irish Pub. We're out back at the Tiki Bar at the pub on the patio over here in Gilbertsville, right next to the old former Zerns Market. La Host on Insurance Monday morning quarterback Dave Ryan. I want to introduce my guy. We've had him on the show a few times before. He's always a good guy, always gives us some good information. In his 14th season as an NFL referee, James Coleman. James Coleman, how are you? All right, how you doing? I'm yep, good, all right, good man, to see I'm you again. Good. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm good, I'm yeah. good. 14 years, man. This yep. is going into your 14th 14, year. 14, yeah. Wow. Yep. And then a few in the college ranks before that. Yeah, obviously. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Been around uh, for a while now. Yep. I still remember. That was, that was one of my favorite stories of all time, how we first met yeah, down exactly. in Florida. Yep. When you're getting ready for the Penn State Bowl game. Right. And you're working for the yep. Big East then. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, we were out having some fun, and uh, that was a great, great time. Yeah, I know. I'll never yeah. forget that. Yeah, I know. All, and all, all my good. friends couldn't believe it that somebody knew the Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Down in Orlando, yeah. in Florida. That yep. was beautiful. That made my whole day, yep. I'll tell you that much. But still working a side judge, field judge deal. Yeah, still, yep, absolutely. Yeah, yep, still yeah number 95. Yep. So when you see him down there running around the field with number 95 on in the stripes, that's our buddy James. Uh, this week, uh, Cleveland, huh? Cleveland, yep. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Cleveland. Cleveland. Yep, absolutely. Sort of a bummer with no Le'Veon Bell, I guess. Uh, yeah, but they hate each other, so yeah, it's gonna, it'll, it'll, it'll be, be a good, good game, yeah. Plus, yeah. it's going to be early, so it's not going to be freezing cold. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right. Yes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, uh, what kind of preseason work did you get? Got a lot of work in for the preseason? Yeah, I got a, a lot of work in. Actually, more this year than in the past because I'm with one of the, um, the rookie referees this year. You know, there's four... Uh, I guess first year uh, referees in the NFL, and I'm uh, with one of the crews, so we end up having to do uh, like two training camps and all that, so we could get to to know each other, and then we work, you know, all four preseason games. So now you, uh, when when you work your training camps, do you ever work those uh, training camps where like the two teams are getting together? Yeah, and going actually, at each yeah, other? that's our, pretty cool. Yeah, it? it is. Our second training camp this year was a dual training camp for um, Detroit and the uh, New York Giants. So we flew in on Monday to Detroit. 
Uh, work training camp Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, then work their preseason game Friday night. And they have a new coach, uh, yep. Coach Patricia. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, I mean, can you tell differences when you go from year to year to different camps about Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can tell. It's, uh, you know, he's he's out of New England. So yeah, no nonsense Yeah, guy. no nonsense. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, it was a uh, – he was tough. They – you well, know. I think that's something good for Detroit. I mean, I think they've had some skill. You know, they have, they've had Stafford. They've had some good players. Yeah, exactly. But they haven't been able to put it all together. Yeah, they haven't been able to get over the hump, right, exactly. So. Yeah, we'll see uh, how he does. It's, yep. it's always interesting to see those young guys when they get in there and make their mark and right, how they, exactly. they do it with, with their teams. But how did uh, Saquon Barkley look uh, for the Giants? You know, he was actually hurt that week. Was he? he was coming off, you know, he had, little hamstring. He had a hamstring. Yeah. So they were keeping him out of, you know, a lot of all drills and nothing. He was just—he was there, but just doing therapy and all. But he's that. a physical specimen for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah, exactly. He's just—you know—he's an amazement to look at, and it's a shame you didn't get a chance to see him play. And and uh, you know maybe when I—I I know when I talk to people after you're on the show, and I think uh, what, what we could have talked about or whatever. But people often ask me like, what are, what is your actual like job description responsibility as a side judge or field? Like, what do you? What are you responsible for when you're when you're there? Well, you're, our you're, keys are on the you know wide receivers at the snap. It's either the widest guy out or maybe the, the the widest two guys out, and we're you know concentrating on what the defensive backs and actually what the receivers and things are doing um, on running plays and also on you know on pass plays. So uh, you know responsible for the tight catches on the sidelines, the defensive holding, illegal contact, pass interference, you know all the big calls that. Upset the fans, yeah. Uh, you know, the games, especially yeah, the, the, the pass interference, yeah, yeah they're, because they're, they're you know, the yeah, because they're spot fouls yeah. and all of that. Well, you know, you don't. So if your guy jumps a little bit before the snap, you're not a an offside guy. No, though. because we have Some the guys that are on the line of scrimmage. Because I'm, you know, I'm downfield, right? You even know, though you're yards, yeah. on those guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, with the with the amount of athletes that are playing that position now on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, I'm sure it's it's difficult for you. You know, or more difficult because they're so athletic they're, right. and they're bigger, stronger, faster, and getting their feet in. And some of those guys are like little ballet dancers. Yeah, exactly, the, right, exactly. The so they're good at you know some of the things that they do, especially with the catches, with getting the toes down and the one hands and all of that. So, um, you know, I think the gloves have helped a little bit. Yeah, too. I think so yeah, also a little bit. A little yeah, bit, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's like fly paper. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? The ball sticks to it. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're not allowed to stick them, but they got those yeah, gloves. They, and this yeah. Ball is like, boop. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, have it's you good. been able to figure out what a catch is now? I know that was like well, the, that was like the punchline last yeah, year. Like right. No one knew exactly what a catch was and whatever. Hey, you know what? It wasn't us that didn't know. It was, I think, more so, you know, replay and, you know, them overturning a lot of the calls that we made on the field. So I think now replay is more in line with what we were actually calling on the field. You know, a lot of the – if you go back and you look, a lot of the plays that – they overturned and replay a few years ago. They're now saying, you know, yeah. like the Dez Bryant catch right, and all right, that. Yeah. And we ruled those catches yeah. on the field. And then, the, you know, the play in the Pittsburgh game last year. Right, with the tight end. With the tight end yeah, and all yeah. that, you know. We ruled it, yeah, we ruled it a touchdown. Yeah. And so um, I think, um, you know, the NFL office and replay has kind of figured out uh, what the catch is now. Yeah. And I think you'll see a lot more consistency. Uh, you know, this year with them sticking to what we call on the field versus um, well, overturning Well, do you, do you feel replay. any extra pressure with, like, Big Brother looking over your shoulder with the instant replay? Or no, you, you don't. You just make yeah, your you call. Yeah, you just go you make the call, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, what I mean, you see, and then they go from there. Right, yep. We keep, we, you know, none of us worry about what they're, you know, doing in New York. Yeah, we have right. no control over right. so we just go out and do what we did before there was, before there was a replay. Well, now I guess the point of emphasis is going to be the tackling issue. This yeah, the year. tackling. The with tackling the, thing, you know, whether they're lowering their head, yes. leading with their hel helmet and all that stuff. And, you know, it's kind of funny when I was texting you about coming over, you said, hey, you got to see what you hit. And right, basically exactly. what it is now. Yeah, and over, even through preseason, from week one of preseason to week four, you know, the, the rule is, you know, it's kind of changed or at least the way that the philosophy and what they want called and what, um, they they want call. I mean, the first week of preseason, I think there were, you know, sixty yeah, something fouls. It was a know. lot. Yeah. But and then, you know, we got a chance to look at plays. They got a chance to look at plays, and competition committee met, and there were some, you know, conversations held. So, uh, you know, some things have evolved. So, uh, I know by week four preseason, uh, the number of fouls were down. But you know, basically, like I said, though, you you need to keep your head up, see what you hit. Right.
Yeah, well, you know, it and it's, it's a shame because, I, you know, and you hear a couple of defensive backs talking like, I don't know how I'm, gonna, I don't know how I'm supposed to play. I don't know how I'm supposed to tackle these guys yeah. or whatever. And, and especially when, you know, because you know you were an ex-athlete, an ex-player, that your first instinct is you're low on your shoulder and your head a little bit, particularly as a running back. And mm -hmm. now, like, where am I going to aim? Where's my target yeah. area now? You know, you know what? Know? There's actually a way to, to make a tackle and still hit them, you know, yeah. hard and get them down. I mean, if you look uh, – Willie Lanier to play for the Kansas yeah, City Chiefs. Yeah, There's yeah, a, yeah. you know, they're running a special with him on, on ESPN, and he, you know, who's a Hall of Fame guy, was a linebacker, but he never he played without using his head. And if you look at all of the tackles and things that he made, you would never see him uh, get his head in there. And the reason why was because early on he got well, yeah, a concussion. Well, because he had that extra padding. Right, now. exactly. Yeah, and the, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the reason for that was because he had a head injury early on and he figured out for himself that if he was going to stay in the league as long as he wanted to that he had to change the way he played the game and he did and he's still a hall of famer so yeah uh, it can be done well it's going to be interesting and mm. and uh we'll certainly see how it goes but to, you know it, it, i the thing that upsets me a little bit is a i think they should trust the referees that's what you're paid to do mm -hmm. but now it lengthens the game with all the replays and all the different things i mean do you find that tough on the field when they're going the replays and stuff i mean you I mean, do you have to you have to try to focus a lot harder with with all that going on, James? Well, no, that because it's stuff that we're doing doing replays. We have responsibilities that you know the things that we're responsible for even doing the replay, even though they are talking to uh -huh. New York because we're trying to figure out and let the coaches know well if they overturn it, you know, this is what we're doing, and if not, and so it, you know, it, it goes pretty fast. And I don't I don't think the number of replays will be up due to the rule, you okay. know, the rule changes and all that. I know doing preseason. You know, they weren't up, at least not for you know for our crew. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about your health. How you how you doing? I I know you've had a couple of injuries. You had a, an Achilles problem a few years ago last year. You had the concussion thing where you yeah for that one on game the right exactly. Yeah. Where no, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Everybody good? You're yeah, all good? everybody, I'm all good, ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't miss any games. La you know, last year like I did with the Achilles uh, a few years ago. Prior to that, that was just a a one week thing where to go through that concussion protocol just right. like the players. But no, I'm feeling good. Good, I'm ready to go. Um, you know. In, now, do you have to shape. train a little bit harder in the all season uh, now that you're, you're no, yeah, you're especially years, yeah, I know, yeah, absolutely older, right. It's yeah. not as easy. Yeah, as it's not as easy yeah. and all that. I, I've been, you know, even this week getting up, um, you know, every morning going out get my walk slash run. I used to run all the time, yeah. but now they're pounding on the uh, yeah. pavement and all that. So I, you know, trying to mix it up and actually bought a bicycle also so riding a bicycle yeah, more yeah rather cool. than that's good yeah just trying to stay in well shape. it's going to be an interesting year and, and you know obviously there's a lot of interest in our area yeah, with exactly. the eagles coming off their their big super bowl win uh you know the interest is all excited people are fired up for yeah, the year exactly i mean i guess you guys feel the same thing oh yeah too. we're ready to go yeah, yeah i mean especially if you know four weeks of the preseason yeah. and all of that is just you know yeah. we are excited yeah, yeah right exactly and stuff, yeah. yeah and our crew i mean we have we have a very young crew. Four guys on the crew uh, have, I guess, their total years of experience together is, is less than mine. We're yeah. 14, so yeah. that's a young crew. That is a young yeah, crew. So, we're, so you're, we're, you're the elder statesman. They'll be looking up so to you for yeah, your Yeah, exactly. I'm happy. Yeah. I was happy that the, you know, the powers to be, uh, you know, kind of saw fit to you know, put me well, with some that's of the a compliment guys to you and, and, this, and uh, your professionalism yeah. too, James. And, and it's always great. Now, you're at Cleveland the first week. Did they give you week to week, or do you know where you're going to we be? We know the next a month couple? ahead of time. So, okay. um, you know, we're actually, we actually get our bye week too, which is, you know, pretty early. Yeah, right? it's real early. Yeah. We don't, we're not, we're not excited about it, but there's nothing we can do about it. And then after that, I think we have like nine straight games. So, week three, uh, I think we have Tennessee at Jacksonville, and then, uh, Week four, um, Cincinnati at Atlanta. So we have some, you know, some, yeah. some good games. Well, you're in, um, in indoors in Atlanta. That's yeah, nice exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I know you. I know travel is part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Do you mind that at all? Uh, no, not really. I mean, towards the end of the season, you know, after Thanksgiving is when it kind of come, becomes a grind yeah. and all of that. But then the games are me more during that time of the year. So um, you just, you know, you have to suck it up and just yeah, keep going. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be okay. watching you again, number 95 uh, on the sideline there, the side judge, James Coleman from Pottstown. Uh, it's, it's always great to see you, and, right, and we'll thanks look forward to getting, checking you out a little bit. And thanks for coming on in the light. It's James Coleman here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. We're going to take a quick time out. We've got a special, another special guest waiting to come on here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Eagles and the professional ranks. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. 
Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar, numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Golf Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. We're back here live at Doc's Irish uh, Pub here in Gilbertsville. We're actually in the back area where the uh, Tiki Bar is, the pub on the patio, if you will. Uh, we're having a good time here. We've got some good fans out there watching as well. They survived the uh, threatening skies and whatever else we have. And, of course, my good buddy, I love to have him on the show the first week to kick off the year. Former, uh, former Phoenixville Phantom, Maryland Terrapin, and Washington Redskin great. My buddy Neil Oakless. Neil, good to see you, my man. Good to be back, Dave. Good to be back is right. Well, you know, it's it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, when I when I think about, you know, what do we want to talk about? And, you know, you have Phoenixville, you have Maryland, and you have Washington. So we have a, a bunch of different things. Uh, let, let, you know, we talked a little bit to, with Rick Pennypacker. Let's talk a little bit about Phoenixville, your alma mater. I know that you uh, they're still near and dear to your heart, very similar to the way Pottstown is with mine. They've had some lean years in the past. Got a new coach this year. Uh, have you heard anything about what's going on down there in, in uh, Phoenixville? Yeah, the Phantoms are excited. You know, they've got a, a new start. Uh, you know, it's been lean years because they have a lot of guys that haven't been around for a long time. Uh, the steel mills closed long ago, back in my day. So, uh, but it's a growing area. They, they have plenty of students. Uh, it's kind of a new life, you know. I got new blood and uh, looks good. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because you know I, I always thought that Phoenixville, Coatesville, Pottstown were all the same kind of kids. Uh, but when we played, they were all the same kind of kid. Now, you know, you talk about the growth of Phoenixville, but now you're sort of getting that yuppie kind of yeah. a deal down there. A little you know, bit of manioc. You know? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> little manioc in them down there. They don't. They don't have that steel blood in them like you guys did. So. It takes a little bit of something to get them to do that 60-minute man and grind it out. That's true. And, and luck, it's a different game now, too. It's much more athletic, much more wide open. So, yeah, you don't necessarily need the, the tough steel mill guys. You have athletes that can uh, run well and uh, do, do great things. 
you know, because you and I are certainly not a product of the spreads. You know, we were old school between tackles. You know, the old Chesmont League, which I still think was one of the best leagues in the state of Pennsylvania ever. And uh, but we, you know, you, you threw the ball a half a dozen to a dozen times a game, and you got your major bones by running and tackling and things. And it is funny to watch these teams play anymore. Yeah, you know, it's three yards of cloud of dust right. back in the old days. It was yeah. almost if we had a throw, they were, they would panic. You know? Right. It's yeah. Like, all right, I guess we got to do one, but. Uh, you know, it, it's a much more exciting game to watch now, too, with, with uh, spread offenses and uh, so much more scoring and stuff from a fan standpoint. It's, it's nice. Yeah. Well, it sort of reminds me of gym class. You know, it looks like gym class, except for we had flags <laughs> and stuff. But it's wide open, all kinds of broken field. Now they just want to get the balls in the best athlete's hands out in open space and try to make everybody miss. That's and true. It's, it's amazing it's, how yeah. much they scheme to match up different people just for one or two plays. If they hit the big plays and uh, hit the big one. It is, and it's, and it's funny because, you know, Pottstown and Feesville, both now, they're in the smaller division. They're in the uh, frontier division with the smaller schools, so they'll be playing each other. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see if they can get something going and try to at least do that way because now they're playing in schools at least their own size. Yeah, and that's, that's only fair. And, and really, I'm starting to hear where some high schools are dropping football just because they're getting blown out so much because it's, they're at such a disadvantage. You know, a lot of these schools are huge, and not as many kids come out. And... Uh, you know, it's nice to see kids can play on a level playing field, yeah. especially at that level. Well, you know, and it's, it's funny because they talk in Co Coach Pennypacker and they talk about the district playoffs and how the importance of that. And I know you and I, when we played, our goal was to win the Chessmont League. That's what we wanted to do. We didn't have district playoffs right. and things. But, you know, we and we wanted to play a good game on Thanksgiving and, and all those things. So there has been a big transformation in, in, in the area for football. Yeah, definitely. You know, the playoffs, it adds on to the season if, if you're fortunate to make it. Uh, our big thing was Thanksgiving Day. Like I said, that yeah. was our, our grand finale. We had yeah. the Thanksgiving dinner right. and, uh, and uh, go on to the next sport. Well, you know, back in our day also, I, I thought we had great school enthusiasm, spirit. I mean, the bands, the cheerleaders. I remember the cheerleaders decorating our lockers and all the neat stuff that was cool. You know, I thought that stuff was neat, and I don't think it's hokey or whatever. I don't know if they have that so much today. There's a few schools like that. I'm hoping that Pottstown and Phoenixville can get that school spirit back and fill those stadiums again and, and bring out the people to watch. A great stadium down there in Phoenixville, Washington Field with the lights and the turf. Pottstown's Griggs Stadium has always been a nice uh, spot. Brand new lights there. Maybe they can get some more people out and watch. Yeah, there's a lot of tradition, you know. Uh, for years, I remember there was the the pride of the community. A lot of the old yeah. guys that played for years yeah. would come back and see them sitting in the stands and, you know, you hear stories about them and stuff. It, it was nice to see the, all the different eras come back and support the team. And it was the big thing in the town, you know. Yeah. It was uh, something everybody made a point to go to. Yeah, I remember even running through. They, they'd make a double line, a little maze for us to run through some of the old guys there. And, and they'd be yelling at us when we came in the back yeah. way. Of now we're the old guys out I there. Know, now we're the real old guys. <laughs> and we got to... We got to hobble on down to <laughs> down there and, and play. But you know, also I talked about the fact that you went to the University of Maryland, had a, a great career there, and led the team in tackles and, and all kinds of honors that you got there. And, and unfortunately, they had a tough situation there this year with one of their players. Uh, you know, had the, the heat thing and and ultimately passed away. And anyway, it's a tough situation down there for the coach and everybody involved in the administration and the public outcry. And uh, you know. It's tough when someone passes away, but, you know, that coach is, is taking a pretty big beating down. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, it's easy to jump on somebody when something like that happens. Uh, you know, it's a terrible tragedy. Uh, you know, there's always a few players that are going to be unhappy and, yeah. and, and cause ways. And, and like a lot of people have come to his defense and, you know, hope that they make changes. There were some mistakes made. They didn't have trainers available and doing exactly what they should do. And, you know, it, it's a tough uh, thing to do to – see how players are reacting because especially the big guys yeah, because yeah. you know they react to stuff Those 300 pounds right you yeah. know it, it's stuff that the average size guy might be able to come through the big guys really have a tough time and understandably yeah and again you know you, you saw a, you know thank god it's not a lot but you see them every you know from time to time that there is a a lineman, you know, McKinney or whoever uh, that, that has these problems with the heat. And, and I guess it, it's sort of tough because, you know, you want to be tough, 
you know, that's part of the football thing. You don't want to ever really say that, hey, you know, I'm tired, I can't do this. You want to get through it all, but yet there's times where you get to that point, you know. Right. And, and, you know, when you and I played, they didn't really worry about that kind no. of stuff. <laughs> it was like, don't worry about that kid. They you just, get out there and play. They just started How many giving fingers us water. Up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and salt pills and yeah. stuff and all the stuff that you shouldn't have done. That's what we had. I know. know. It's, it's crazy. So we, we certainly were brought up in, in, in a different time. But but they did come back with a real nice win against Texas now, two years in a row. They did. It's uh, a, their opening game. It's amazing. They, for some reason, they got, got Texas there. And they it do. was great because a lot of them, you know, were dedicated that game to the guy that died. And, right. Uh, it, it was really nice to see an emotional moment. It was. It certainly was. And, and I, it's funny. Every time I see highlights in Michigan or uh, Maryland, they have 97 different uniforms. <laughs> I, and all I can picture is what the hell would Okawis look like in these, in these uniforms? Because they got some funky looks I know. Down there. I have a hard time telling which team they are <laughs> for the first the quarter or so. Uh -huh. It is amazing. Uh, you know, we had the old school red yeah, and white. Red and white yeah, yeah, you know, and stuff and with the M on the helmet. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it's, a lot of it's marketing. And, well, well, the guy Under Armour is big into yeah, it. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it's a, good for the fans and the players. I, think, I guess they love it. The modern players, I think, yeah. like all the different changes. Yeah, they, they do. But it is true. Like I said, I'm like, oh, is that, is that Michigan or, that, or, or Maryland or who the hell is that over there? And then there, you, you wonder know? if they win a couple games, yeah. they're going to keep <laughs> putting the same one. I know. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, all athletes are superstitious. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I know that I tape my hands in one way and I had a lot of tackles and picked the ball off. I was taping my thumb that way. Yeah. You make know, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's good stuff. Well, you know what? It's funny now that we're getting ready for Eagles now as well. And the Eagles have certainly had a great year last year. You being a, a former skin, they have that little uh, thing back and forth. I know, you, you know, your, your wife is a big Eagles fan. And, and you similarly are a little bit as far as your secondary team. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the Redskins. Start with the quarterback. They got a new guy back there, Alex Smith. Yeah, Alex Smith. I'm uh, anxious to see how he does. He certainly did a great job for KC. Uh, I think they're going to have a pretty wide open offense, and uh, should be really good for him. At least you know for a year, a year or two, he's you know he's older, but uh, should be what they need. Well, I said you know with uh, with Gruden, you know I guess uh, as a, that's another guy sort of you're down the line with 50-50 with. Some guys love him, some guys don't. Is he good? Is he not good? Uh, you know I don't know. I'm not. Uh, in the situation as much. I'm sure you're not either, but you're still there. You know, what's your assessment of, of Gruden? Yeah, you know, he's certainly got the bloodlines. Um, I think he's getting to the point where he's got to produce. You know, it, it's uh, been a tough couple of years, but the Redskins in general have been down for, for years. So uh, they're getting to the point where they got to produce it this year or next and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, well, we're going to take a quick time out. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk more about a little bit of the Redskins and when you play. And, of course, our Eagles uh, against the Falcons tonight as we kick off the 2018 season here live at Doc's Irish Pub. We're out back, actually, at the Tiki Bar, the pub on the patio, if you will. He's Neil Alquist. I'm Dave Reiner. This is the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar, numerous TVs, and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reiner to call. 
and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Back here live on set at the Tiki Bar, at the uh, pub on the patio, if you will, at Doc's Irish Pub, next to Zern's in Gilbertville. Dave Rydenauer joined by my good friend Neil Oakwood, who's always there to bail me out. And Neil, it's always great to see you. We were talking a little bit about the Redskins. I want to ask you about this guy. I, I mean, I think you may have played against him, Adrian Peterson. Now he's in the <laughs> fold. He's a running back for the Redskins. You may have played against him. Uh, maybe. He's getting close. <laughs> anyway, he's amazing now. You know, a class guy, takes care of himself. I, I really hope he does well. Uh, the stuff I've been reading, they're planning on using him as the prime back. The other guys are, you know, occasional guys. And see how long he lasts, at 33 or whatever he is. But uh, I'm a little excited about it. I, I like to see how he does good. Well, it was sort of sad that Darius Geister, you know, one of their top draft picks, blew his knee out there early on in preseason. He was a guy that they had a lot of high hopes for, a rookie out of LSU who waited his turn behind Fournette, and then he got his shot at LSU. And now he comes out, second-round pick, and bam, you know. And it's, again, one of those really, like, non-contact jobs. Yeah, you know, it's you know, crazy, isn't it's it? amazing, you know. It's a, a high-round pick like that, and, uh, you know, lots of times it's a cut, you know. it's a, There's such pressure on the right. cuts and yeah. you know especially in turf and the pro level uh it's easy to do well especially as big and strong as and as muscular as they are now you know i mean i i love thinking about redskins and your old gang with riggins and those guys you know and he was a he was a much better athlete than i think people didn't want to give him credit for because he was such a, a character yeah definitely but, uh, but these guys you know these guys are amazing athletes and uh, yeah i mean they're, they're the prime athletes they have to be to to rise to that level yeah. these days it's uh, a lot of them do track and other sports, yeah. too. Well, it's funny because I talked to, to James Coleman, the NFL ref, before he got on here about Saquon Barkley. He said, it's amazing just to look at this guy. And now he hurts his hamstring. I said, man, it, that's got to be a big hurt because he's, <laughs> he's got some pretty good guns so on So huge. Him. That's true. Sometimes they get so big that they, they pull them a lot, you know. You have to be careful. That was always back in our day. That was our excuse anyway. Yeah. <laughs> did you have a, you know, did you have any Earl Campbell-type guys that you had to go up against that you sort of remember that were, man, are they strong from the waist down? Yeah, there was, well, actually the one guy on our team, with Steve Atkins, he ended up playing for the Packers for a couple of years. Was was kind of like a Jim Brown type guy, uh, just a massive, natural guy. Yeah. Didn't lift a whole lot of weights, but just massive naturally. Sort of like an Abel Joe that we yeah, played against. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We played against in high school. Then I played against him in college when he went to Cheney. It was yeah. pretty pretty crazy. Well, you know, each each week we do have our game ball. Normally we wait till after the game. But this week, uh, we're going to do our little game ball before the game. Uh, my good friend at the starting room, Paul Strauss, is there, and he's always with me, and uh, he, he's a good guy. And there you get a good picture of my boy Paul there, uh, uh, helping somebody out there, cutting some hair at 943 North Hanover Street in Pottstown. And he, he's always been a good guy. And, and we're going to do a little different this. Uh, we're going to project the game ball. Obviously, tonight the Falcons and the Eagles play in the uh, season opener for the NFL defending uh, Super Bowl champs and a team that really was pretty solid uh, last year with Matty Rice and all those guys. Uh, so I'm going to give you first chance. Uh, I don't know who you think is going to win the game or not, but who has to really play well or who do you think is going to play a big role in tonight's game? I really think uh, Zach Ertz is going to be the big guy. Uh, you know, they, they're down, not many receivers. Uh, of course, Nick's going to be full is going to be a big part of it. But I think Ertz, they almost have to feed and be very involved in, in tonight's uh, game. Well, I, you know, obviously Nick Foles would be the obvious choice that, you know, we're not, I'm not going to go there and, and, and award him my game ball because he does have to play well. But I think it's going to fall in maybe the running game of, of the Eagles. Uh, uh, Jahi and, and Clement, if he gets some touches, I think they got to run the ball a little bit. I think they, they got to hold on the ball. they got to choose some clock because, you know, with Julio Jones and Devontae Freeman and, and their high-powered offense with, with Matty Ryan back there, I, I think they don't want to get into a, a, a gun-slinging match with them and uh, they, so I think that uh, Ajayi and Clement may be two guys that have to come up with a big game for the Eagles to pull out this. Uh, this yeah, first I really game. like Clement uh, 
during the preseason and stuff. And the Jai is very explosive too. Uh, that's a good point. You keep them keep them off the field. They have a lot of weapons and. Uh, It'll be a big help. Well, especially with all Sean Jeffrey a little nicked up yep. yet. And I don't know if Aguilar is back or what his deal is. You know, they're a little thin on the outside. And, you know, to be able to stretch the field. And, right. you know, it always worries me guys have been out for a while and they come back. And, you know, it's, you can't just turn it on right away. Sometimes it takes a little while for guys to get back into it and, and produce. And I even a guy like Darren Sproles. You yeah, know, he missed exactly. the whole year. And, yep. You know, he's, he's not a young guy anymore. And he was such an explosive guy. And, and he was man, would come up with big play after big play for the Eagles for, for many, many years. I'm anxious to see what role he has. Yeah, tonight. I always liked him. He's yeah. a good player. He is, he is a good player. And let's talk a little bit about the Eagles. Uh, you know, the, obviously the controversy at quarterback, which really wasn't a controversy, but turned out to be one because, of course, the media has to do their thing. And, <laughs> and I like the fact that Doug Peterson got a little bit feisty with them. A little, you know what? You know what? This is what we're going to do, guys. And I don't care if you don't like it and blah, blah, blah. I sort of like that side of them. It uh, doesn't show it often. But uh, what was your take on all that? Me too. I thought it was a good sign. I thought it was a sign that they're getting back into it. They're kind of getting over the hangover from, from the Super Bowl. It's good to see them get a little mad. It, you kind of got to go into a season with a chip on your shoulder and mad, whether it's the media or something else. You got to find something to make you mad about to, to get the engines going. Well, you know, you've been in that situation. I mean, you, you've gotten two Super Bowl rings. You, you, fin you lost one another one, so you were in three. You know, what is it? What, what is the component that gets you to, to, to do that, to do multiple Super Bowl runs, to be like the New England Patriots who year in and year out, they don't seem to have a letdown and, and that hangover, as you mentioned, from the Super Bowl? You know, people really don't realize how hard it is because you're playing almost an extra six weeks in the season. All the other teams are sitting back, resting, getting ready for next year. You're still playing. Then, of course, you get all the adulation from the year and, you know, tell, people tell you how great you are and everything. And uh, when you get back to it, it's kind of kind of hard to, to get back. And even mentally, you think you are, but uh, you know it's not the same as as when you're hungry. You know, yeah. because you got to stay hungry. Yeah, well, I, I guess that's obviously human nature. But I also know you, you make a good point there. That you have that extra almost six weeks of, of intense training and right. practicing and playing and stuff. And while a lot of guys are already playing golf, I know that's why you can't hit the golf ball that well anymore. <laughs> that's my you guys, excuse. You always had to extend the season, so you missed all that golf. Time. Neil. That's what it was. <laughs> You'd be a single-digit handicap right about now. That's pretty good. I, I like that. But you know what's another thing I think is, you know, what are we going to look at Jason Peters now, you know, at the left tackle spot? Misses a whole year. He's not a young guy anymore. Uh, obviously, at the top of his craft, he was one of the best ones. Some say a, a, a Hall of Famer. I mean, I, I'm not sure how that works with linemen, you know. But um, a very, very good player. I'm anxious to see how he responds this year. Yeah, I know. You know, it's good they've got the experience, so lots of times they can kind of come back, but still a year off of anything. You know, it, it takes you a little while to get the rest off, and practice is great. And, and usually they practice hard, but still, when it comes game time and everything's flowing a lot faster, uh, you never know. And as you get older, you get a little slower, and, and you never know for sure until you actually do it. And, he, and yet he hasn't taken a snap in any preseason <laughs> game either, you know. So that's, you know, I, I, I said, I. I don't know. I played a lot of sports. Football is one where you got to play. Yeah. You got to play that. You know, it's you just can't all of a sudden plop into it. You got to get and you got to get used to your body taking the hits. And you certainly know a little bit more than I as far as the NFL game goes. But all my from I consider ninth grade, when you really start to play football through my college level, you got to play. And you got to right. get yourself in shape. Yeah, there's nothing like the sport you're playing to, to be playing it, and especially at that level. You know, it's it's a game of inches and uh, you know milliseconds, and makes a big difference between win and lose. You know, and it's funny. I and I'm, I'm sure you were probably the same way. As many sprints as you ran, as many hills that you did, and all this stuff, it, <laughs> you still are sore as heck that first week of football. Oh camp. yeah, you know. I don't care how. <laughs> oh man, I'm in such good shape. I'm going to knock these. <laughs> things out and you're still beat up you know yeah you know you can only train the body so much and right you're gonna hurt yeah it's crazy it's crazy crazy you know I'm anxious to see now you, you obviously a middle linebacker I played a little bit in college um, what Jordan Hicks is going to be able to do you know he's always a guy who's been a good solid player when he's on the field but he can't avoid the injury bug you know he spent a lot of time in the tub yeah you know that, that's a big key for a lot of teams you know we had, there's a lot of guys that come flash and they look good and they'll play a couple games and look great, but then they're out for six or seven games, and you know you can't win anything with, with, if you have a bunch of guys back. A couple guys maybe, but uh, you know they'll find somebody who can play 
16 games. Well, you know, most of the time, is the teams that are the most successful, Neil, are the ones that are, are the healthiest. Right. You, know, you, you know, it's good to have depth, and you have some depth in these positions, but most teams, there is a little bit of a drop-off, obviously, or, you know, you wouldn't be the, the backup. Uh, if you can get some decent backups and the least amount of uh, injuries possible, really hurt, helps your team. Sure. You know, I really thought that was one of my greatest assets, but I didn't get hurt that much uh, because, you know, it gave me the opportunity to play when, when others uh, were out, and, uh, and then you stay there and they can't get you. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, and I've played a lot of football. I certainly did not play in the pro level, but from my ninth grade year to my senior year in college, I never missed a practice or I never missed a game, and I'm probably more proud of that than I am of all the tackles or interceptions I had or whatever. No, I agree. I mean, I, you know, to, to last that long, and especially these days, guys seem to – take it off for every other week for something, you yeah. know, it's, it's amazing, but uh, we're always proud of that, of uh, the Ironman, you know, yep. you should go out yeah. awards for yeah. Ironman, you know. Yep. Uh, and I always said, well, I didn't run fast enough to pull anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, so whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Neil, well, we got to do one more time now, we got to do a little bit more business here before we head back, we come back, we got our five-pack picks, I got a question for you to see uh, how well you can remember some things, because it has something to do with your, your career a little bit uh, at the Washington Redskins. Neil Oak was Dave Ridenauer here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback, we'll be right back. <laughs> Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. Back here live at the Tiki Bar, uh, the pub on the patio here at Doc's Irish Pub in Gilbertsville, right next to the legendary Zerns Market. Dave Ridenauer and Neil Oakwitz here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. And again, I want to thank everybody. It was a very, very trying day with the crazy weather that we've had all summer long, Neil, as you know. Uh, we had rain, not rain, thunder, th uh, lightning, who knows what all was going on in the heat. But uh, my crew, I want to thank a lot. And of course, all the good people from Steve on down here at Docs, they, they always are very, very uh, tremendous for us here 
on, on air. You know, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, this Eagles game. Uh, oh, let me know. I know what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you the question first. We got our Big Frank, uh -oh. Big Frank question of the week brought to you by Clean Cut, my good buddy, Big Z Batara. We want to congratulate him. His beautiful daughter, Lindsay, is getting married this weekend. They're all excited, but uh, keep Big Frank's memory alive. And he was uh, one of our favorite guys, as you can see there. Joe C. and I used to have a lot of fun with Big Frank. And there's nothing more that he loved to do than try to win the, the question of the week. And uh, I got a good one for you, Neil. Here we go. Since the Eagles are playing the Falcons uh, tonight, I thought I'd try to find a question in that game. And the question is to you, who is the career leader in rushing yards for the Falcons? And he played during your time. I'm not sure if you played the Falcons in those days or not. But the career rushing leader uh, for the Atlanta Falcons played from 82 to 89. So he was in your era there. Uh, he is the all-time leading rusher for the Atlanta Falcons, if you want to think about it for a minute and we can come back to yeah, it. You, you wanna... it. Was it Andrews? Uh, I forget his first name. William Andrews? <laughs> yeah. No, it was not William Andrews. It wasn't Gerald Riggs, was it? It was, it was Gerald, Gerald Riggs. Riggs. He was yes. with us for a while. I yeah. forgot I what years he was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he, uh, he was a load. Yeah, he, he was. was a load. Yeah, yeah. And he was a load. He had 6,631 yards, wow. which is the all-time leading rusher for the uh, Atlanta Falcons. He played from 82 to 88 with them. And uh, I figured you probably butted heads with him, but I thought he did play for the Redskins. Yeah, era. like the last couple of years he was yeah. with us and did go. a good job. Yeah. And, again, that's our big Frank question of the week. I want to thank the uh, Big Z and Clean Cut for helping us out with that. All right, so we're looking at the Falcons. We're looking at the uh, – uh, the Eagles. Matt Ryan obviously is a big name, you know, very, very well paid guy. Oh, I did want to ask you about all these guaranteed <laughs> contracts too. I, I'm sure I'm sure now the defense is getting all this money. Wow. Neil's thinking, oh my goodness, what would they pay an old linebacker yeah, these days? It's amazing, you know, they, they always paid the big guys big money, right, but now yeah. it, it's just trickled down to everybody. It, uh, it's amazing. It's a and the guaranteed it. money yeah, is really that's, what's that's nuts. the key. They, Back in our days, they couldn't guarantee anything because they want guys to be hungry and right. make the team, and now they're guaranteeing them years out. <laughs> well, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was the first yeah. one that really got the big one, but, you know, they're the, con uh, the quarterback who, you know, certainly all the teams are revolve around, but Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack and those guys now are cleaning up. We talk Le'Veon Bell, who's on your fantasy team. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't showed up. I, I, 14 and a half million is not enough for him. <laughs> Barely is, not. Yeah, that's that's kind of – and I'm, I'm surprised, you know, you know, it's sort of a, a non-written rule that you don't really talk about other guys' uh, contracts, but some of the Steelers have really piped up a little bit and said, hey, you know what, dude, you're, you're hanging us out the Yeah, drop. I was surprised too, but once you get into the season, things change a little bit, and then you're kind of letting down your buddies. You know, you, they understand if you're holding out preseason, you're trying to get the best deal you get, but once, once you start getting into the season, you're talking the real stuff, and uh, it gets more emotional. Yeah. Well, speaking of your fantasy team, who was uh, who's your fantasy quarterback? My fantasy quarterback is Mahomes from Kansas City. Oh, and Garoppolo. Okay. I'm kind of, took kind of a, a risk there. Guys, I'm yeah. going with young guns, All and right. uh, we'll see. <laughs> I got uh, I got Big Ben Roethlisberger, and I have Matty Ryan, but yeah. I'm not playing him. I can't play him against. There Steelers, you go. Even though he could probably throw for some big yardage tonight, but uh, I really I, I I caved in. Actually, we're running a league out of here. It's, uh, it's called the uh, Bragging Rights League uh, here at Doc's Irish Pub, and uh, I helped to run this league, and I didn't even know what I was doing. But yeah, it was, you're going to be hooked now, uh, I tell you. I'm going to be hooked. You're going to be in a fantasy football show, I know. I'm going I'm to put my team up against your wives. I want to get her. Uh -oh. I want to fire Don't her. Don't mess with her, man. She's kid. a champ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we, we got some smoke coming out of that light there, Gus. Is that all right? <laughs> A couple of lantern flies are, are burning. We're getting, a we're getting rid of lantern flies okay. for you. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, they're a pain, aren't they? They are. Oh, they're all over gosh. the place. Yeah. And that was one of the neat things. I just got back from New York on my golf trip, and uh, uh, no lantern flies up in New York at all. Wow. I did not see any. And really, the bugs were not out as well. All right, Neil, well, let's go. We got our five-pack picks that we always have a lot of fun with. Uh, I'm going to thank uh, my boy Kurt and, and Paul Bauer and everybody at Izzy's on 3rd. Izzy's on 3rd uh, uh, helps us sponsor the – Five pack picks, and let's start out right off the bat with a team that's people are, are jumping on a little bit the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans travel to New England for week number one. Uh, how are you rolling with that one, Neil? Uh, I gotta go with the Pates. Okay. Pats. All right. Uh, you know, Houston's hot team, supposedly, and should be a good team, but 
can't go against the Patriots at home. I'm going, to, I'm going for the New England as well. Uh, I'm glad to see, though, that Deshaun Watson, the quarterback who had the major knee injury, is back. J.J. Watt is back, and those guys are good for football. This is Coach O'Brien's kind of year now. Like he's, It's about time for him to, to do some things, take that next yeah, step. Yeah, they're very exciting players, and you're right, the kind of time to make the next step up. All right, the, the hated Cowboys travel to Carolina. Ah. Uh, so there's uh, your boy Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott and the gang going down to take on Cam Newton's bunch. Yeah, I can't stand the Cowboys. I can't pick them. I'm not a big Carolina fa fan either, but I got to go with them. I do too. I, I, I saw the one Cowboy preseason game and they got killed. So I know. I'm hoping it's a... Well, their defense, although Sean Lee is a very good player, I'm sure. Yeah, I do like him. You like him. I mean, when he's on that field, they are a much, much better team. And there's your sideline to sideline kind of guy. But here's another guy who gets hurt a lot. But I, I too, I, I, I can hardly even see. I can picture you dressing like Cam Newton going to games <laughs> and stuff with your hat putting all that crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Now, a pretty good, interesting game. Seattle goes to Denver. You know, Denver with a new quarterback now, Russell Wilson, and there are some things going on, some turnover out there with the Seahawks. How do you see that one, Neil? Yeah, Seattle's going through some changes. I'll go Denver, mainly because they're home. I think it should be a good game. All right, well, i got to go against you on one. I'll take Seattle, right. even though I, I'm not a big Seattle guy. Uh, Pete Carroll's done a pretty good job, one of the few coaches sure that's been has. able to do well in the college and professional ranks. And here's a, all of a sudden a good game. I think because of Khalil Mack factor, Chicago travels to Green Bay. We talked to Aaron Rodgers now with the big payday. Uh, did they catch him off guard? Yeah, I, I think the Bears are going to be real improved. I think they're one of the teams people are talking about. But I still got to go with the pack. All right. Well, I'll go. I'll go against you again just to keep things interesting and take a little an upset there and see if the Bears and Mitchell Trubisky can uh, pull together something. And of course, we have our game tonight. We got the Falcons and the Eagles. All right, well, I got to go. Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get out of here alive. I do. You do. No, I do. I'm anxious to see how they play. I really, uh, I just pointed in the preseason, but uh, I think they're still a good team. I do, too. I And I said, you, and you know you played, uh, so you know, I don't know if you put a lot of stock in the preseason game. I think they're mainly for guys trying to make the squad and so many younger guys get on special teams and backups and try to open up some eyes. And, and I'm, not, I'm sure that the Eagles kept it very vanilla. You know, they didn't have the RPOs, run pass options, and all those different things. Um, so it's, it's, it is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's hard to tell for preseason. A lot of teams emphasize them more than others. But uh, it, it is hard to turn it on and off. So and they worried me a little bit, but uh, I think they'll do it. Uh, that's what I think as well. Well, we're down to the last minute there, Neil. Anything uh, good for the good of the order there uh, from the <laughs> NFL? Anything uh, Happening that you want to say here before we have to say good night? Well, I'm just excited for another year. You know, it's uh, off season always seems like a long time. Like I said, the fantasy football teams are rolling now. People get said, I'm looking for a little cooler weather. So that uh, always means football season to me. And you're back to work, which is kind of a <laughs> that's bummer, right. huh? Back patrolling the halls, but uh, that's <laughs> and good. Eh? And I had a laugh because I said said to your wife, I said, please don't roll over when he gets up to go to work. <laughs> Keep right on sleeping through because she's she, retired. She seems is. to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to work on her list. we got that honey-do list for her. Yeah, we're going to introduce her to coming. the vacuum cleaner and all that stuff, huh? <laughs> that's all good. Well, I tell you what, I want to thank you for stopping by. It's always great to see you. Had a great show. Ricky Pennypacker, thanks. And James Coleman's always fun and informative, and of course my good friend number 52 uh, in Neil Okowitz there, in the top 70 redskin of all time. Still couldn't beat Pot Sound, but <laughs> the guy's got two rings, and I got nothing. I got nothing. But anyway, thanks again, Neil. Hey, we're going to see you again in uh, another week or so, but it's been a fun time out here. I want to thank everybody again at Docs. Thanks to Gus and, and Matt and Dave and the gang for putting this all together. We'll see you next week.
last week and to praise knowledge